Is it something we need to worry about, or is it just all rubbish? My wife and I live in an apartment um, block on the Gold Coast. Um, it's got underground parking, so I've got my own parking spot. And I've set up a, um, a, a charging station there um, for me to use. Um, some owners have expressed concerns that my car might explode because and they're not happy about me charging or even they're not happy about me charging my car down there and they're also not happy about me parking my car down there because they're afraid that um, whilst whilst I'm charging unattended it might burst into flames or it might just burst into flames anyway so I know it's a load of rubbish you know it's a load of rubbish but what are the facts so can EVs, in particular 803s, catch fire while they're charging? Does it happen very often? Does it happen... Are there more EV fires than there are petrol fires, petrol car fires per population, like as a proportion? Um, if they do catch fire, or if they can catch fire, what can I do to lessen the chances of my car catching fire and if it does catch fire what can I do um, so these are questions that um, I wanted answered and I've gone to the um, I've decided to do research and um, and uh, really identify um, what the what what are facts? So, um, so this video is about um, what I d I've discovered. Some of it's not pleasant, um, but they're facts. So, um, hopefully, uh, we'll know what to say when we hear things like this. Hey, have you heard? Those electric vehicles, they are unsafe. Apparently, there are thousands catching fire and exploding all over China. The Chinese government are hiding this, so that EV sales will not drop off. Really? That's not good. We were thinking of buying one. Apparently, there are Teslas exploding and catching fire, all over the states, as well. I will stick with my gas car. EVs are just too dangerous, maybe in a few years they will be okay, when they get the technology sorted. Unfortunately, you hear this a lot. Are they right, or are they wrong? Let's find out. Persons owning, charging or driving EVs should be aware of the following. It is a regulatory requirement in Queensland to attach an EV sticker on an EV vehicle's registration plates, so emergency personnel can quickly identify these types of vehicles. An electric vehicle that has been involved in a collision or fire, or has been submerged in water, must be treated with caution as the high-voltage battery pack may be compromised. Damaged EV batteries may ignite hours, days, or even weeks after the initial incident. If you are involved in an accident or traffic incident involving an EV you should act swiftly and ensure the parking brake is engaged, the vehicle is switched off and all passengers are out of the vehicle. Keep clear of the vehicle, uphill and upwind, and warn passers-by to keep at a safe distance, at least 30 meters, even if there is no visible signs of smoke, vapors, or flames. Call 000 and tell the operator that the vehicle involved is an EV. Clearly detail the make and model of the vehicle, which will allow responders to access additional emergency information specific to the vehicle. Ensure that EV remote ignition keys are at least 30 meters away from vehicle, as these can inadvertently start the vehicle. 
If anyone has been exposed to spilled battery fluid, flying debris, smoke or vapors, or flames, seek urgent medical assistance. Burns should be immediately treated with cool running water for 20 minutes. Urge, or use the vehicle after the incident unless it has been inspected and approved for use by a qualified technician. Damaged EVs should be kept in an open area at least 30 meters from other vehicles, buildings, and or other exposures. When installing charging equipment, ensure the charging cable and or unit is electrically compliant and installed by a qualified electrician. To find out more about the dangers of uh, uh, battery fires, I went to the National um, Transport Safety Board of, of America. Um, some very interesting information around thermal runaway, stranded energy and uh, battery reignition. Also, it's important to um, remember that they're talking about um, lithium-ion batteries, not lithium-ion phosphate batteries. Um, lithium-ion phosphate batteries are, are dangerous, but, but nowhere near as dangerous as the um, lithium -ion. Hello, I'm Tom Barth. Over the last few years, I've investigated battery fires in electric cars. The NTSB published a report describing the investigations that I worked on and the safety risks battery fires in electric vehicles create for emergency responders. Let me give you a few highlights of the fires we investigated. In August of 2017, an electric car crashed into a house and burned in Lake Forest, California. Firefighters had trouble extinguishing the fire. They poured thousands of gallons of water onto the roof of the car. They didn't realize that they had to direct water onto the battery compartment under the car to cool the battery and stop the reaction causing the fire. This is called thermal runaway. Another challenge in Lake Forest was that the battery reignited while responders were winching the car onto the tow truck. New short circuits were created when the battery shifted, causing the fire to restart. The battery reignited once again at the tow yard. A crash in Mountain View, California created a risky situation, managing a high voltage battery fire on a busy freeway. It was a challenge for emergency responders to know when and how to safely move the car. And then, five days after the crash, the car's battery reignited at the tow yard. Firefighters were called to extinguish the fire. Even after the fire was out, the battery retained energy and was at risk of reigniting again. The manufacturer's engineers tried, but failed, to remove the energy that was left in the damaged battery. This is called stranded energy. In Fort Lauderdale, Florida, a high voltage lithium ion battery burst into flames after a car traveling well over 100 miles per hour crashed into a wall. While the wreckage was being removed from the crash scene, the battery separated from the car and reignited on the tow truck. At the tow yard, investigators confirmed the presence of high voltage and stranded energy in the damaged battery. A car fire in West Hollywood, California shows us that a crash is not the only event that can cause the high voltage battery in an electric vehicle to catch fire. Here, an internal battery failure led to the fire. Firefighters quickly put out the flames, but they called the automaker for advice on how to stop the car from smoking. Firefighters were told to apply water to cool a battery, but where to apply the water was not clear. Guidance specific to each electric vehicle model is vital for emergency responders, regardless of what causes a high voltage battery fire. Thermal runaway, battery reignition, and stranded energy are key safety risks in electric car fires. The NTSB's report details actions that the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, automakers, and fire and tow associations must take to protect our emergency responders. You can find the report on our website at ntsb.gov. Okay, so they are dangerous. Um, EV fires are very hot, they're difficult to put out, they can burn for hours or even days. But are they safe? Now, that sounds like a crazy thing for me to say. 
I'll just say that they're dangerous and I'm asking whether they're safe. So let's look at that. Uh, an aeroplane is dangerous. If it crashes, your chances of survival are very low. But they are safe. So it's not whether something is dangerous. It's whether, whether it is safe to use. And that's what I needed to find out next. So where do I go to find out if they're safe? And, and what I mean by safe is how often do they catch fire? Um, given that if they do catch fire, they're very dangerous. But how often does that happen? Um, so it's a bit hard to go to places like Hello My Friends. Um, so I decided that the place to go to would be to the United States. And the people to speak with or to, to get information from would be the insurance companies. EVs have been in America for a, for a while. The, the um, Teslas have been there for a long time. And the insurance companies would have statistics on, on uh, frequencies of fires. Well, how did I go? Well, really good, actually. All of the uh, data was consistent across the insurance companies. Um, the fact is that in the US, EVs have more fires as a proportion than petrol cars. WTF. Um, this is what's causing the news reports. Um, but if we look into it further, um, there's a little bit more we need to understand. What's the definition of an EV? Electric vehicles are vehicles that have electric motors. So hybrid vehicles are EVs too. So if they're EVs too, um, the fact is really that in the US, fully electric uh, vehicles combined with hybrid vehicles have more fires in petrol cars. In fact, in the US, hybrid cars have more fires than petrol cars. So let's separate the the fully electric from the hybrid. So this is um, from um, Auto Insurance Easy, which is a very large American company. Um, they show that, actually they split up the hybrid, electric and um, petrol cars. So we get a better idea. So if we have a look at this graph here, I won't tell you which is which yet. But the, um, number one is 3,474 um, vehicle fires per 100,000 sales. Number two is 1,529 um, vehicles uh, per 100,000. And the one that comes last is 25 vehicles out of 100,000 sales. So have a guess which is which. Um, I'll just let you think about it for a minute. Well, as you can see, hybrid is by far the largest. It's almost double, is more than double that of petrol. And uh, EVs is such a small, or well, electric vehicles is such a small proportion of the overall. It's only 25 per 100,000 sales. In fact, the whole of America for, for last year was 52 fires across the whole of America as against 16,000 for hybrid and 199,000 for, for, um, 199, for um, petrol cars. So that puts a little bit of a spanner in the works for those people that, that don't like electric cars and think they're going to blow up everywhere. Um, so there you go. Mind you, it's not good for hybrid cars. And when you think about it, they've got the, the battery issue of, of electric cars and they've got the petrol issue. So you've got petrol mixed with batteries. So, I mean, that, that does make sense, doesn't it? So, um, I hope there's not many people watching this video that are hybrid people. Um, I do know that some people are buying hybrid because they think they're safer than electric cars. I don't know how they get that, but um, I've heard that. I do um, try to make uh, my videos um, interesting and um, pertinent to Atto 3 owners. Um, if you're happy with my videos, um, it'd be great if you'd subscribe.